you won't be on. Okay, we can, we have it headed this way. Okay. So, good morning, everybody. God is good. Hey, all the time and all the time, God is good. Yes, He is. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hi. Hey. How are you? I'm alive and kicking. Out. Yeah. yeah. I, did you go to the hospital? I heard you went to the yes, hospital. Yes, I. Uh, I took five days off. Went in the hospital. You okay? No, but I'm better than what I went in. Yeah. A lot better. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Yes. How you folks been doing? Praying for you. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Results, yes. I'm here. Amen. <laughs> I'm glad that I'm here. That's right. Same here. I'm here. We might have got beat up a little bit, but we're here. Yeah, right? I like. Amen. There you go. We got beat up a little bit. That's but something that happens. Yeah. Yes. Oh, Jesus got beat up too, but he rose back up again, didn't he? He sure did, didn't he? Hey, yes, he did. Amen. Yeah, yeah. All right. <sighs> Just the joy. He's just the joy that I. 
is good all the time. We love to praise his name. Praise him. Amen. Beautiful, beautiful Minister Lexi. Amen. Praise God. Um, I wanted to talk today about wrestling with the Lord. And I think all of us in here are old enough to, to say that we've been through some kind of struggle in our lives. It would cause us to wrestle. Every day of our lives, something happens to try to aggravate us and make us feel bad. It's either our bodies, sickness, it can be relatives, it can be friends, it can be your car, Lord, I know it can be the car, <laughs> you know, but wrestling with God, if you look in, if you want to turn your Bibles, if you have them to Genesis chapter 32, and I know you heard the story about Jacob's thigh, about Jacob wrestling with the angel. Amen. <clears throat> Jacob, Jacob wrestled with God. Take your time. Uh, Genesis chapter 32. Amen. When you get there, say amen. Or wave your hands. Amen. There we go. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, I'll read verses 24 to 30. And Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go, for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. And he said unto him, what is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men, and hast prevailed. And Jacob asked him, and said, Tell me, I pray thee, thy name. And he said, Wherefore is it that thou dost ask after my name? And he blessed him there. And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, for I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. Uh, and then it goes on to say, And as he passed over Peniel, the sun rose upon him, and he halted upon his thigh. Jacob uh, wrestled with the angel, and, and he wouldn't let him go. And I believe this is the message that God has for us today. When you, when you are wrestling with something in your life, hold on to God's unchanging hand. Don't let him go. There's a lot of things in our lives that tries to get us to uh, take our attention away from God. Don't let him go. It says in verse 30, For I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. How many of us can say that we have such a close relationship with the Lord? This is what God wants. He wants us to have close, a close relationship with Him. We need to take out private time with the Lord. Amen. Now we watch TV. Mm -hmm. Amen. We do all different kinds of activities during the day. But how long is your prayer life? You know, the prayer is our communication with God. And we should not fail to pray. In fact, um, if you look at, I'm going to turn to 1 Samuel um, chapter 12, 23. For those who have uh, notebooks, you can write that down. 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 23. A lot of people don't know this, but not praying is a sin. God wants us to concentrate on Him right. constantly. 1 Samuel chapter 12. There it is, verse 23. And it says, Moreover, as for me, God forbid that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you, but I will teach you the good and right way. Now, isn't it something 
that he said here that he'll sin against the Lord by not praying for someone? So that lets us know that not praying is a sin. God wants us to pray as much as you can. He says pray unceasingly. Don't stop praying. And that doesn't mean, you know, with your hands clapped and on your knees. It just means keep your mind stayed on Jesus. Keep your mind stayed on the Lord. Amen? The Bible also tells us that Jesus sits on the right-hand side of God making intercession for us. So Jesus is sitting on the right-hand side of God, and he's praying for us. How much more do you think that he wants us to pray for others as well? Amen? All right. Praying, uh, with praying uh, not, not praying is a sin. The Lord teaches us to, and then in Luke 11, 1, the Lord teaches us to pray. Now, the thing about it is a lot of people here, they, they, they call it the Lord's Prayer. How many of you have heard people call it the Lord's Prayer? I'm sure everybody has. But if you look at what he says uh, in Luke 11, 1, he says, 11, 2 actually, he says, When you pray, say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Then he goes on and teaches us how to pray. And in the other Lord's Prayer that you've seen, probably in Matthew, he says, pray like this. He's teaching us how to pray. He didn't necessarily mean for us to say the exact same words. Amen. But he's teaching, first you say, our Father. That means you're acknowledging that God is your Father. Amen. Amen. We always want to acknowledge that God is our Father. And who art in heaven. That means he's not in the ground. You know, he's not, he's, he's in heaven. That means the heavenly kingdom belongs to our Father, and we're the king's kids. So, you know, people shouldn't touch us because when they do something to us, our daddy fights back for us. Amen. In the text, we have Jacob, whose name is, well, it means supplanter. Jacob was very crafty. How many people do you know who are crafty? They're always up to something. Amen. Amen. There's just some people like that. They're always up to something. Well, that was that's what his name meant. His name meant crafty. And even when he came out of his mother's womb, when Jacob and Esau came out of their mother's womb, he had his hand on his brother's heel. He was trying to get something uh, that wasn't his even when he was coming out of the womb. So he was always up to something. He was holding on to his twin brother's heel. He cheated the same twin brother out of his birthright. Now, I know you just heard the story about Jacob and Esau, where Esau he just sold his, his uh, birthright for a uh, uh, bowl of soup. Jacob cheated him out of his own birthright over food, over a bowl of soup. He took all of Esau's belongings. And then when you look in Genesis chapter 32... Now, after he did all this stuff to his brother, and all of a sudden he's afraid. He, he stole his brother's birthright. He took all of his belongings. He's on the run, and now he's afraid. Which means, obviously, he's the type of person that creates uh, chaos for himself. And how many times do we do that even in our own lives? We create our own chaos sometimes. And if, even though we would like to blame it on the devil, or we'd like to blame it on somebody else, sometimes it's our own fault. The Bible says our soul sins. Amen. You, you have to listen and do the will of God, not your own will. Now all of a sudden he's afraid that his brother's going to kill him, his band, and his family. He asks God to deliver him from the hand of his brother. Isn't that something how he stole which is against God's law. He stole something from his own brother. Now he's asking God to bless him. Isn't that odd? How many people do we know that do things like this? They do wrong things and they ask God to bless them in it. God, God's not going to bless you in your mess. Amen. God will not bless your mess. He have, the Bible even tells us when we have something wrong with our brother or our sister, we have to make it right. When you fall out with somebody, you have to make it right before you ask God. How, how can you expect for God to forgive you? Right. Amen. If you can't forgive somebody else. Right. 
Uh, amen. What goes around comes around. He asked God to deliver him from the hand of his brother. God does forgive, but we oh, have to yeah. ask him first. Amen. No, it, well, if you don't ask God to forgive you, then that obviously means you have pride. You have so much pride in you that you feel like you don't need to be forgiven. You know? Mm -hmm. He even had a gift. He had a peace offering. Have you ever had somebody do you wrong and they give you some type of peace offering as though it was supposed to make it right, but they still didn't apologize? Isn't that something? It, some people just, they can't get it to come out and say, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that to you. So you got to watch out sometimes when you get a peace offering, when you get something from somebody. A lot of people have sold their souls over, uh, over offerings like that, over gifts. Amen. You know, sometimes people do things to you and they make you so mad that you feel like laying hands on them suddenly. <laughs> Amen. You feel like laying hands on them suddenly, but you got to leave it up to the Lord and pray. Right. Amen. Jacob goes on to himself and he sees this angel. He wrestles with the angel. Have you ever wrestled in prayer? Have you ever wrestled uh, in, with yourself with a situation that's going on in your life that seems endless? Endless. God is there for us. God is our, Jesus is our deliverer. And anything he says, Especially in Jeremiah 33, 3, he said, ask, and I'll give it to you. If we don't ask, he says, you, you didn't receive it because you asked to miss, or you didn't ask the way you were supposed to ask. Amen? Now, I, I understand a lot of people say, well, I've been asking God for healing, and I never got healed of that thing. Well, when you ask God to heal you, some people get healed immediately. That's an immediate healing. Mm -hmm. And some people have the I-N-G on the end of it. Healing means that you're in that process. So you never give up. Never, uh, you know, I, I ask God to deliver me of, of, of things, you know, certain things that I, I, I experience, and I know that by his stripes I am healed. Amen. I'm healed. And if I have to Amen. ask God about it until Jesus comes back, I'm not going to fail. And the same, you guys do the same thing continuously. Wrestle with that thing. Amen. Wrestle with it and until you win the situation. Jacob said, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. And that's what God wants us to do. Don't let go. I don't care if you walk with a walker, you walk with a cane. I don't care if you have some kind of diabetes like you know, or, or some kind of mental or emotional issue, physical issue. I don't care what it is. Wrestle with that thing. Don't ever give up, because the day you give up, you let you let it hit one. And this is a message God has for us here. Hit one. And look what happened to Jacob. Jacob wrestled so much, so hard with this angel. He said, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. And guess what? He got it. Now, he didn't get a blessing without some kind of ailment. Sometimes you're going to have that little limp. Jacob had a limp in his thigh. It was so bad. If you verse 32, Genesis 32, 32, it says, Therefore, the children of Israel to this day will not eat the shanu, the sanu, which shrank. And they won't, to this day, Israel will not eat the thigh of an animal because of what happened to Jacob. Of course, we know that would be the uh, Orthodox Jews. They will not eat it out of respect to what happened to Jacob here. And it says, which is upon the hollow of the thigh unto this day, because he touched the hollow of Jacob's thigh in a sinew that shrank. They won't eat it. And that's something. Wrestle with it. I said this morning uh, to my Facebook friends, hi Facebook friends, I said this morning to my Facebook friends, I said, uh, I thought it, it's almost speaking the same thing as this. And I told them, press through. Don't ever let go. Press through. Probe through. Don't let um, timidity stop you from living your life. Don't let timidity stop you from worshiping the Lord. And even though sometimes your house may see, your apartment may seem quiet, 
and you might be afraid to say something because you don't want anybody to hear you. Let them hear you anyway, right? If, if people want to hear something, you know, some people are so nippy, they always want to hear somebody's business or something. If they want to hear something, let them hear you praising the Lord. Amen. Amen. Say amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 That's right. Let them hear you praise the Lord because somebody else might decide to get saved by listening to you. Don't be ashamed. God said, if you're ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you. All right. Amen. Hallelujah. Wrestle with that thing until you get a new name. God changed Jacob's name to Israel. Where is that at? He says, uh, and the angel asked him in verse 27, what is thy name? And see, he answered, he said, my name is Jacob. And he said, thy name shall no more be called Jacob, but Israel. And we see what happened to the name Israel. It became a great nation. He became sort one of the, one, one of the uh, high heads of a great nation. God's chosen people. Amen. And, he, and then the angel goes on to tell him, for as, and let me say, because, for as a prince hast thou power with God and with men and has prevailed. Verse 28 is very important. You want God to tell you that. You want God to tell you that because you prevailed with the wrestle, you're getting blessed. Yep. You, you fell the other day and hurt your back. You pre prevail with that thing. You continue to pray. And you keep saying, devil, this is my body. It doesn't belong to you. I bind you in Jesus' name. You're not going to hurt me. You will not. If God did not do that to you, God wants you healed. Yeah. Amen. Wrestle with that thing. And you know, if you look, the thing, I noticed something else too. Jacob asked the angel, he said, what is your name? And the angel didn't answer him. Isn't that something? Now, the angel asked Jacob what was his name, even though we know the angel knew his name, right? God knows everything. The angel works for God. God knows everything. But he asked Jacob, what is your name? Isn't that something? But whenever Jacob asked the angel, what is your name? And the angel told him, he said, you don't even know my name. Why are you asking me what my name is? See? So this is God telling us that we don't need to know his business. Whatever we need to know, God put it in here. Amen? If it's not in here, you'll see it if you continue to wrestle. Amen? If you continue to wrestle with this life that, that we have down here, God's going to show you some things that's going to knock your socks off when you get to heaven. When we get to the new heaven and the new earth, everything down here on this earth is just types and shadows. It's not the real tree in heaven. Not the real streets. We know that the streets in heaven is lined with gold. It's not this pavement that they have to keep laying down every two or three years. Amen? It's like God walks on gold. If God walks on gold, how much more does he want you to walk on gold? Amen? Amen. So God's telling us, don't concern ourselves with his business, but tell him ours. Tell God your business. Tell him everything. Don't, don't tell all your business to the neighbor. Don't tell all your business to your family. They don't need to know everything. It's nice to, to say some things, but something uh, God needs to know everything. Yeah. You know, it's nice to hold conversations with people and talk to people about some things, but God needs to know everything. God wants you to tell him everything. If he would have told Jacob his name, and I hear something else went through my heart in my, in my spirit as I was reading it. If the angel would have told Jacob his name, he would have gave Jacob the power to control him. And our flesh tries to take over us a lot sometimes, doesn't it? Sometimes a person's flesh is stronger than their spirit. And how many times, how many times have we heard people who worship Satan and they worship angels? God tells us in the Bible, don't worship angels. See, we are not to tell God's servants what to do. We don't worship angels. We don't talk to angels. I mean, unless God sends one to you as a messenger angel, like Gabriel. Gabriel is a messenger angel. He's, he came down and he told Mary, he said, you're going to have that wonderful thing, Jesus. 
Now, if God sends a messenger angel, you can talk to him. And then there's guardian angels you can talk to him. But I believe in my heart that if that angel would have told Jacob his name, Jacob would have been able to control him by calling him all the time. Uh, that's what I believe. And the only, and if you notice when you read your Bible, I think the only two names mentioned in the Bible, I believe there's only two, I want to say there's three, but I think there's two, is uh, Gabriel and Michael. And I believe there's a reason God left out the names of the angels. And I think that's it. They, they serve God, but when God is in us, God rides in us. Amen? See, I believe some people will try to get them to try to control them. Where is your face of God experience? Think about your life. Think about this story, how Jacob wrestled the angel. And ask yourself, where is my face-to-face -face experience with God? When did I ever hear his voice? When did God ever talk to my heart? And then you just pray and you say, Lord Jesus, I need you to speak to me. You, you just ask him, Lord Jesus, I need you to speak to my heart. That is your face-to-face -face experience with God. When Jesus begins to speak to your heart and give